Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Thought Leader Club podcast. Oh, my goodness. So I cannot believe that this is an episode that I am creating because it's been five years since I've started, I've put out, I've announced my business out into the world. Five full years has passed since March 6, 2019, as I am recording this. And as you can expect, I've learned a lot of things in the past five years, right? And just years ago, making it to this five-year mark of my business, it didn't seem impossible, but it just wasn't even in my realm of awareness. And over the years, I've seen a lot of people come and go in the online entrepreneurship space. And I can't deny that I'm pretty proud of myself for not just staying in the game, but I'm also now more committed than ever before to keep going, keep growing, and keep creating amazingness for others through this business. So today, I want to specifically share my top five lessons when it comes to building a sustainable thought leadership business that is here to stay. And I know for those of you who are listening to this, your work matters to you. So I want to support you in continuing to do what you do, no matter what natural ups and downs you may face moving forward in your journey as an entrepreneur. So here are my five top lessons from the past five years. Here goes. Okay, lesson number one, being committed and being consistent. So the truth is, I have never gone viral once in the past five years. My Instagram engagement have honestly plummeted since 2022, and I get relatively low number of views on my IG stories, and a lot of my feed posts on Instagram get like 10 likes or less. And honestly, my business revenue in the past year has been up and down. So my business numbers are not exactly what you would call consistent, especially in the past year. But you know what I am 100% certain of? It is that I am so confident that I am committed to my work and that I'm here to stay for the long term. My podcast, Thought Leader Club program, my, my commitment to showing up for my clients, audience, and community at large, teaching people how to build a body of work and become known for their unique thought leadership. This is the work that I am committed to. Right. And now being in the game for now five years has shown me that no matter what my own business results are, I'm pretty confident that no one can outlast me in terms of commitment and consistency. And if anything, the more unstable ups and downs that I see in my own business, the more stability that I create within myself, because I'm not just here to make some quick money and then bounce to the next trending business opportunity. Right. So all in all, this work matters to me. And honestly, I am nowhere close to being done with what I'm here to do. There are people to help, content to create, and work to do. And this is just the beginning. And I cannot be any more excited to double down on doing this work even better for all of you. So now the question that might be coming up is, okay, but like how? Like how do we strengthen our sense of commitment to what we do? So for myself, although I do think that I personally intrinsically have a deep sense of commitment to my work, I'm also of the belief that commitment is like any other character skill, whereby you can hone it and strengthen a skill, right? So I did some quick research and I was looking at a particular paper. It was called Fostering and Measuring Skills. Interventions that improve character and cognition. So it was published back in 2013 by uh, James J. Heckman and Tim Kautz, and it was a really well cited paper. So I want to just read out a snippet of the paper's abstract. Okay, so here goes Character is a skill, not a trait. At any age, character skills are stable across different tasks, but skills can change over the life cycle. Character is shaped by family, schools, and social environments. Skill development is a dynamic process in which the early years lay the foundation for successful investment in later years. 
High quality early childhood and elementary school programs improve character skills in a lasting and cost effective way. Many of them beneficially affect later life outcomes without improving cognition. There are fewer long term evaluations of adolescent interventions, but workplace based programs that teach character skills are promising. The common feature of successful interventions across all stages of the life cycle through adulthood is that they promote attachment and provide a secure base for exploration and learning for the child. Successful interventions emulate the mentoring environments offered by successful families. Okay, so that was the abstract. I also wanted to share that I am currently reading a book called Hidden Potential by Adam Grant, who is a best-selling author and currently teaches at the Wharton School at University of Pennsylvania. And he wrote in his book that Character is often confused with personality, but they're not the same. Personality is your predisposition, your basic instincts for how to think, feel, or act. Character is your capacity to prioritize your values over your instincts. So I think this is a really great distinction because it's, you know, it's really easy to prioritize your values when things are easy, right? When the stakes are low, but your true character is basically going to be revealed when you have to actually embody your values during really tough situations where it is honestly easier to not embody your values, right? So all that to say, there are some arguments that support the notion that character can potentially be seen as a skill, so something that can be developed or strengthened. And if that is the case, then a argument that can potentially follow is if repetition is important for skill building, then repetition can also contribute to developing your character, right? So that's why in this episode, in the context of us solopreneurs building our thought leader, business, and personal brand, the question I want to now ask you is how can you do the mundane things, the ordinary things in a committed, enthusiastic, and if honestly, if anything, an extraordinary way, right? Because I still remember back in the day when I was working in a laboratory setting, I was doing these really repetitive and really, really dry, boring tasks, like 98% of my time in the lab. So for context, during my third and fourth year in undergrad, I was working at a lab where I was looking at the working memory processes of the parvobumin and cholecystokinin interneurons in the medial prefrontal cortex. So to do this, I had to perform behavioral experiments and some surgical procedures on mice. I use optogenetics and immunohistochemistry methods, and I analyzed uh, mouse brains using like confocal microscopes. But let's be honest, these are the, the sexier parts of my job scope because the actual bulk of my work, it was really basic really boring, like nothing I would ever write on my CV, especially an academic CV. But honestly, it was probably during this phase of my career when I really learned to appreciate the importance of doing the fundamentals and doing it consistently. Sure, it may be mundane and boring right now and nothing to flex about on LinkedIn, but you know what? Over time, it is the foundation that lets me do bigger, cooler, and more like extraordinary things, right? And the more I look around at what other like cool, shiny things people are doing, the more distracted I am from honing my craft that's right in front of me and is also crucial for the foundation that I'm building upon for years to come. And the same goes for your business. The boring, mundane, ordinary work that you're doing right now, none of it is ever going to waste. This work matters. And hey, you know, when you're consistent, that also shows to others that you care, right? You care about what you do and you care about your people that this work is impacting. So putting all of this together, commitment and consistency is honestly a win-win approach for you to build a sustainable business that is here to stay. Okay, so now moving on to the second lesson, which is about owning your shortcomings and insecurities. So here's the thing, the more you try to cover up what you think you're lacking in, the more you will question yourself in those specific areas. 
For example, the more you you shy away from how little years of coaching experience you have and instead try to like cover that up by over promising what you can help clients with, the more you're going to question yourself if you can really help clients. So for myself, in the recent months, I've really been increasingly trying to embrace like owning my my insecurities. And just for fun, let me share some of the actual thoughts that have been rummaging through my mind these days. Okay. <laughs> Cheryl, who the hell are you trying to teach on thought leadership? People that you meet in real life or people on LinkedIn are going to roll their eyes and think you're just trying to make some money without any substance. There's no way you can sell your coaching program unless you promise quantifiable monetary results. Like people don't think they need coaching and they don't need help with their content or confidence, etc. Cheryl, you're not as legit as other coaches who make more money than you, or even people who are in an established traditional career. Your brand is not professional or legit enough. You're not as good looking as other people on the internet. Your, your dream, it's not like legit or big enough. Like you don't really care for like growing to seven figures and building an empire and be your own boss. Like that's not your dream. And therefore, it's not good enough to share on the internet. So sit your ass down, Cheryl. Like These are legit thoughts I have in my brain, right? So what owning my insecurities look like for me, it could look like several different things. It could look like, number one, being open about what are my current areas for growth and what I can improve on, especially within the context of my business. And doing so has honestly just helped me create a lot more peace in my work. It could also look like number two, leaning more into my natural gifts and strengths. Or number three, it could look like building up my intrinsic motivation to put myself in learning environments again so I can actually fill in those gaps through knowledge building or skill building. So for example, one way that I'm currently leaning into my true strengths is I created a new way to work with me and this program is called Co-Work and Chill with Cheryl. So in a nutshell, Co-work and chill with Cheryl is a three-month one-to-one experience designed for solopreneur podcasters by a fellow solopreneur podcaster. And it is really for the podcaster who is currently struggling to be consistent with their show. They want to build their name as a podcaster, but the process is taking them so damn long and they feel so much friction week after week after week. And they love the feeling. They really love it, right? They really love the feeling of publishing a new episode and they're, they're so excited to share their podcast on social media every single time. But then they dread having to start the whole process over again for the next episode. So Cowork and Chill with Cheryl is designed to help you with three things. Number one, get a lot done in a lighthearted and efficient way. And get ready to become a speedy content ninja. Like seriously, I want you to do good work create good content and help a lot of people and still be able to go out and live your life. Number two, become prolific and consistent with your podcast body of work. So what's going to happen is that you're going to have more content output than ever before without needing to spend more hours per week on this. And when you have a consistent and compelling body of work that reflects your voice, that is precisely going to set you up for really, really big and cool opportunities in 2024 and beyond. And number three, recognize your own voice and express that confidently through your podcast. So through my prompts and questions, you're going to start to see your work from a different perspective. And I'm also going to help you pick up on the nuances of your voice and identify when, where, how you're trying to speak like someone else. So I created this new offer for two reasons. Number one, I genuinely believe that being a prolific and consistent podcaster can be done in a very relaxed way. You can get a lot done quickly, efficiently, and with ease, and therefore free up hours and hours of time every week to go live out the other parts of your life. And number two, this is something that I'm really, 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 really good at, and I've helped so many clients become prolific and consistent podcasters and still have a chill AF life, right? So that is a um, a nutshell of this brand new offer. Now, that said, for those of you who are now like really intrigued about co-work and chill with Cheryl, you can head on over to CherylTheory.com slash CCC. 
to read all about this new program and take the next steps when you're ready. And the show notes will also have the link as well. Okay, so there we have it. Lesson number two, owning your insecurities, which could look like being more open about your current areas for growth and what you can improve on. It could look like leaning more into your natural gifts and strengths, or it could look like building up your inner like intrinsic motivation to put yourself in situations where you are learning again. Okay, now onwards to lesson number three, which is I don't need to impress anyone. Nope, F that. Honestly, being deeply grounded in myself and expressing who I truly am, that matters way more than trying to like fluff up my feathers and impress people on the internet, clients, colleagues in the industry, or people I know in real life. Because five years of building my brand and business has like, on one hand, it it has helped me develop a thicker skin, but on the other hand, it's also softened me in the sense that I don't feel like I need to put up a front anymore. I can truly be relaxed and just show up as I am. And perhaps this is why over the years, I've had countless people comment on how like authentic my brand is or how authentic I show up. And I've also had clients come to me saying that they want to show up more authentically, similar to how I do, right? And perhaps this is also why I believe that we each have our own unique thought leadership and style of thought leadership. Right? Because when you're really owning your style of thought leadership, then you won't feel the need to impress others. And also what tends to happen is that you just start to express who you genuinely are and share what's on your mind. And this self-expression is what will lead others to naturally gravitate towards you. Right. So one exercise that has been profoundly helpful for me is asking myself, If I didn't feel the need to impress others, what kind of thought leader will I be? Let me say that again. If I didn't feel the need to impress others, then what kind of thought leader will I be? Okay, so just for fun, let me share with you what I wrote down for myself. And I got like a whole long list of things here. So um, get ready. Okay, so one, a thought leader who is a calming presence for others, yet have bursts of energy and wholesome vibes. Number two, a thought leader who is genuine and sincere. Number three, a thought leader who is committed to their work and that leads them to be prolific and consistent with ease. Number four, a thought leader with very high work ethic. They have the capacity to outwork people in a consistent, calm way. They show up no matter what their external circumstances are a thought leader who is warm and friendly, and they want to get to know you and your story. And they're also transparent about sharing what they know and about themselves. Number six, a thought leader who is honest, right? Even if it means risking the relationship. Number seven, a thought leader who is consistent and reliable. People can rely on them to show up and they can expect a certain standard of excellence. Number eight, A thought leader who is earnest and enthusiastic, especially about things that they're excited about. Number nine, a thought leader who makes decisions quickly and take actions quickly. They're always failing or falling forward and therefore learning at an accelerated pace. Number 10, the way they show up leads others to just love being around them and want to be around them. And they attract similar like-minded people. Number 11, a thought leader who is willing to experiment and figure out what changes they can make instead of just like flat out quitting when something isn't working. Number 12, a thought leader who is relentless when it comes to their goals. They will show the hell up and talk about their work. Number 13, if things aren't working out, this thought leader will lean into creativity and do things differently. And if they're seeing themselves stagnate, they they know it's time to shake things up. 14, a thought leader who has their own version of influence, leadership, and power. 15, a thought leader who doesn't try to be someone they're not. Instead, they're 100% themselves and they radiate that out into the world. And lastly, number 16, a thought leader who isn't trying to impress, like impress the whole world in order to be influential, but they know they just need to be a leader for their people. And every time I read back on this list, it helps me feel tremendously grounded. It grounds me because too often do we get swayed by 
others around us or what we see online. It's really easy to feel inadequate or lacking. Like it's like we we need to be more this or more that or less of this, less of that. But whenever I really reflect back on who Cheryl truly is yearning to become, it calms me the hell down and really guides me towards showing up in a way that is most in integrity with me. And that perhaps is another major reason why I've been able to stay in this game, quote unquote, this game of entrepreneurship for now five years and counting, right? So in, in summary, lesson number three, express, not impress. This is going to make light years of a difference in terms of building a sustainable business and brand that is not just long lasting, but also genuine and in integrity with you and your people. All right, now moving on to lesson number four. The first few years are going to be a lot of trial and error, and these are necessary for shaping you to become the entrepreneur that you're meant to become. So for a lot of us, building an online business and personal brand, the first few years, there's going to be a lot of exploration and like finding out what works and what doesn't work for you. And more often than not, this time will also be characterized by experiences and provide a lot of valuable lessons that will then pave the foundation for the wisdom that you're going to need for years to come. And honestly, there were seasons in my business journey thus far that just felt intensely discouraging and challenging. But as I'm entering my fifth year of entrepreneurship, or is it sixth year? Because I've I don't know. Math will math. Okay. But as I'm entering my fifth or sixth year, um, I, I can more deeply appreciate the experience I've gone through and are still going through for some of them, right? I can appreciate how they're vital for my personal evolution, both as a human being and as an entrepreneur, right? So I've shared many of these lessons of my business journey on past episodes on this show. So the three particular episodes I really want to recommend you to bookmark and listen to after this episode include episode 148, which is all about my thought leadership and business journey. Episode 123, which are my lessons from becoming a full-time entrepreneur. And also episode 100, which is Burnt Out Side Hustler to Multiple Six Figure Coach Part 1, The Mistakes and Challenges, and also Episode 101, which is Part 2. And these are the biggest lessons and shifts moving forward. Okay, so I really recommend these three, well, technically four episodes. And I, I really recommend them because you'll hear a deeper dive on the lessons that have allowed me to truly build a sustainable business for now five years and counting. And also lessons from going from side hustler to full-time entrepreneur and just other behind the scenes of my journey. Mm, and one more thing I do want to say here is that although I don't consider myself like a seasoned entrepreneur by any means, I like to just see myself as someone who was more mature than I was five years ago, right? There's still a lot of nuggets from the past few years that I still need to synthesize and internalize and integrate, but I am definitely a lot more aware of who I am and have a much clearer vision for the direction that I'm heading towards both in life and in business. So in summary, lesson four is all about being open to all of the ups and downs that you're going to navigate. There's going to be a lot of experimentation, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of trial and error, and all of this are necessary for you to stay in the game for the long term. And last thing, please don't just like half-ass, like don't just half-ass these challenges or lessons because the more you resist them or ignore them or like gloss over them, the more these patterns and situations are going to keep popping back up until you actually learn the lesson you're meant to learn. <laughs> Sounds good? Okay, awesome. Now let's move on to the fifth and final lesson for today, which is time will pass. So what are you going to do with this time? Honestly, time and time again in the past five years, I've seen that if there's there's something that you really desire, now is the time to get your ass to work. Meaning, please stop waiting before XYZ is in place. Make a decision now. Start putting in the reps now. Commit to your goals and dreams and vision now. Like I, I'm so serious about this. 
Because otherwise, you're just gonna wait another four months or another six months or another year, and time it's just not something you'll ever get back, right? For example, a lot of people that I talk to have commented on how much they would love to have my current lifestyle, like a very chill, relaxed solopreneur lifestyle. But it took years to get my business to a point where I felt sufficiently safe to leave my previous career. And it took me years to develop the necessary skills as a mindset that allowed me to reach a point where I could quit my academic career and pursue my business as a full-time career. And I'm still learning to this day, still learning to sharpen certain skills as a mindset, right? And sure, like my business isn't necessarily where I want it to be, but I'm so much better off than where I was a few years ago, five years ago, right? Because time and time again, I just started to do the work, right? I chose to do something even on days where I felt so much resistance or hesitations or self-doubt. I continued to put myself in a beginner situation over and over and over again in order to do better and be better as an entrepreneur, right? All because I chose to just do something over and over and over again, like every single day since I started this journey five years ago. And the way I see it, it's a decision. It's, it's a decision whether to grow or not, right? It's a decision whether you want to make progress towards your goals or not, right? When it comes to building a sustainable thought leadership business and brand, it's really just about making decisions day after day, such as a decision to commit to doing the basics over and over again consistently, or a decision to learn the lessons you need to learn and integrate it instead of just like low-key brushing it off, right? Because the world, it doesn't wait for anyone. And so as time continues to tick, it is your choice whether to take the next step forward even if it seems like the most mundane or the most insignificant step. And that's like the choice versus like staying exactly where you are, right? So the question really is, what are you going to do with this time? I'll let you decide. Okay, so there we have it. Five lessons from five years. I... Truly hope that you and I will continue to journey together for many, many more years to come. And I promise, I promise this, I am committed to supporting you however I can for years to come. So thank you so, 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 so much for listening to this episode and I'll see you all in the next one. Sounds good? Awesome. Let's get to work. <laughs>